Okay, so this patch was an experiment, and I tried placing some different kind of paper inside my drawing. Because if I wanted, for example, an exposed brick wall, it would be better to start with an overall tone and value already if this was part of my focus, part of my spot color. But the tradi traditional way of patching is when you have something that is incorrect and you want to fix it. The way to go about that is to tape a piece of the same kind of paper, and we're using marker paper, so you would tape the same kind of paper down. What you would do is secure the paper you want to replace the old paper with, secure it onto your cutting board. You have to make certain, especially when you're using markers and marker paper, that you've got the right side. So every time I take marker paper out of my pad, I put a check mark in the corner in pencil to show me that this now is the back of my paper, because you know, our pad of paper, we have to use the back. And I'm going to secure it to my cutting board. It can't move. It's got to stay still. So I'm going to make sure it doesn't move. So this is the same kind of paper as what I want to make a correction with. So here's marker paper as well. And what if I decided that I didn't like this typeface? It was all wrong. How would I fix that? I would tape this now over top of my replacement paper, tape it securely. Now, it's exceeding the size of my cutting board, so I'm going to just put a couple little pieces here on the back. And when you cut, you cut both pieces of paper at once. And the best kind of knife to use is a scalpel because it's so pointed. And I find with them, they keep loosening. I don't know if you have the same thing. So you have to keep tightening them before you use them and then after. So if what I want to do, I'll just do some a simple patch. And if I just want to patch this now, I have to make sure the best way to cut anything is not to press but to take several passes over the same place several, several times. And that way, and you'll be able to feel that you've cut through both pieces. And this is a simple patch, as I mentioned, I'm just cutting out a square. But you can do quite complicated patches, provided everything is secure, and it's not going to shift, not in the least, when you do this. And parts you might have to lose. I'm going to have to lose a little bit of the lettering above, but that's okay. I can draw that back in. And then you carefully peel away the top layer. And if don't pull. I didn't catch this over here, so I've got to do that again. I can't really get my head under here, or I'd be a little more careful about how I cut that because you have to cut exactly in the same spot but you shouldn't pull it should pop out like that if it doesn't then keep cutting till it does then you take your masking tape again and again you're securing this in place and you flip it over and tape on the back. Now, even this part, be careful, because if it's not cut all the way through, you have to do more cutting, more careful cutting, because you don't want any gaps. And then once you've got it, you flip it over, and you use the magic tape, the clear, transparent magic tape, the one that looks frosty, that's the one you use. And you make sure to cover everything, all your corners, so that... And it's better, too, if you don't handle it as much as I handled that piece. And then you put it in place. 
and that should take care of that for you. And if you had an unfortunate thing happen over here, you should cut it off. So you don't want two layers, just you want it to lie flat. So there it is. It's all patched in now. And you can go ahead and do something different in that spot without any problem at all. And this can really help for unfortunate things that happen. They're going to happen. So it's nice to have a way of correcting it. Now, this experiment that I did, I had in mind an exposed brick background here as part of my spot color. And it also, having a darker wall and a wall back there, leads our eye into the composition. So that was my thinking. And then for that, I would use my pencil crayon and if you can go back and get your original vanishing point that would be the most secure way to do it otherwise you'll end up with uh, I won't do a whole lot here I'll just do a little bit so because I think I'm a little off to get this to be correct. Don't risk it without vanishing points, is what I'm trying to say. Now, if I had a sharper pencil, that would work. You also have some ink pens, white ink pens, too, that would help. This is something, I don't know whether I showed you this or not. This is a gouache pen. It's a Sharpie, but it's fantastic. You can, it looks very fat, but you can get some fine lines with it too. And it will really show up on colored paper, maybe too much. So you can dot it with your finger if it looks like it's too much. Well, it's still wet, but it dries pretty fast. I've never tried it with a ruler. We could try it with a ruler and see. So this would end up giving me more oomph, but it's great. It works on every kind of paper to get a... Oops. Right there. But if you catch it before it dries, you can fix any, correct anything you want to correct here. So that's Sharpie paint pen paint pen. What's good about putting the white in a little more dramatically is that it brings back some of the original color of the paper so that this doesn't look as cut out and stuck on as it did previously. And then you can use your color pencils to dress this up a little bit, make it more the color you want it to be. But starting out from white paper, it would have not worked as effectively as starting out with this paper. And then you can put a little shadow. You can also go over the white part to make it less, stand out a little bit less. Because some of these walls are a bit distressed. And they're not perfect bricks. To taper it off at the side, you could even have, you know how sometimes there's the plaster, it's the bricks start dissolving and there's more of a plaster over here. You could even do that. So just a couple of examples of how to patch and correct mistakes or Supposing you had a 
beautiful color for your cushions and you couldn't get the same effect with markers and you thought you might like to try patching in a piece of colored paper, that might work really well, it might work better. And also on bricks and things like that, you this you can smear with your finger you get it on, and especially over colored pencil because the colored pencil will make a wax, waxy surface. So, but there are some of these bricks that kind of, they just kind of break up over here. Start breaking up, and if that's how I wanted to do the whole thing, start putting breaking up some of these too. So it's a little bit almost like painting once you get going. But you do have gouache paint too, so you could use your gouache paint in the very same way to do this kind of thing.